Torbox Neo editing controller is a breath of fresh air in your editing experience. But what are the pros and cons of it? Let's review this. This editing controller really made me thinking how strong my muscle memory is, because during the first couple of days my brain didn't want to move my fingers in the way I set the controller, thinking that I'm still using a keyboard. But when you're getting used to it, oh man, things get a lot faster. So let's have a closer look at Torbox Neo and what it can do. First of all, the build quality and materials are very important since you're gonna be touching this device all day long. And let me say, I'm so happy about it. Everything feels smooth, ergonomically and anatomically correct. Also, Torbox Neo has enough weight and rubber feet so it doesn't move on your table. And I really like this carrying bag. Big thumbs up for it. And even the USB-C cable is braided and feels great. The clicks and overall sound of this device, of the scroll wheels for instance, is also very important to me. So have a listen guys. One more good news is that it can be used in a ton of applications, almost compatible with all the programs to be honest, but I've been using it only in Final Cut Pro X for the last couple of weeks. The app installation is simple and the app itself is intuitive and easy to navigate, so let's have a look at how it works and how I set everything up. So guys, as you can see, we're in Final Cut Pro 10 and here is the Torbox logo in your up bar and you can toggle it like so. You can call out a console. So here it is, the console itself. You can press any button, for instance, this knob, or you can rotate this knob and it'll show up. Let's do another button, and now another button, and now another button, and it shows you what command is exactly on this button. Also, as you can see here, we have a couple of presets for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, editing and color grading. And if you enter this program, it will automatically switch, as you can see here. So here is the final cut and how it is set up for my workflow. It's not perfect. I'm still doing some more customization, but you'll get the idea of how to customize this device. So guys, let's start from the top of the list. Here we have the first knob, here it is. And if we just scroll it, it'll scroll up and down. As you can see, I can scroll through my entire, uh, let me say, uh, height of the timeline. And as you can see, it's perfectly working. And if I press to the middle, it will do a command B command, basically cutting clips into halves. And if I want to reset this, I'll press this one. And as you can see, it's doing a command Z command. So here is what I'm talking about. As you can see, the command Z command is right here. And if I want to scroll this wheel, it will scroll my uh, cursor basically. So I can do it in one frame increment or if I do it faster, it will scroll much faster. And it's easier for me to do than with a mouse. Also guys, for instance, I set this short um, button to be my uh, space bar. And also I set this tall one uh, a long one, a top one to be my A button and the tall one to be my B button. So basically here it is how it works. So I press one and it plays back the music and it, it is very loud in my headphones. So it plays it back. I can stop it. I can pick the blade tool or if I don't want it to, I can pick the A tool. I can cut this clip in half by pressing this button. Here we have one more scroll wheel and it zooms in and out of my timeline and if I press in it will set a marker. So let me say I'll set a marker and I can zoom in or zoom out of my timeline. And I also customized the C1 and C2 to be my cutting buttons. So from the back of the clip and from the front of the clip. It's really easy and fast to use those and I can always go back by pressing this knob and overall scroll the timeline. So it's very easy and convenient. I'm doing this like so guys, because <laughs> I want you to see what I'm pressing and uh, overall I'll be working like this. It's really easy to use and it's comfortable and your hand doesn't get tired. Your wrist is okay, it's in a natural position. Also guys, as you can see, you can use combinations of those commands. So the top key and the down arrow, uh, up arrow and uh, right arrow, left arrow, uh, the side key and so on. So it's really easy to customize and you can basically, uh, you know, input all of the commands that you use and that you want to use. And overall, while you're editing, you'll be adding more and more commands to this system. I really like that it's almost having no limits, just like my channel, no limits on. 
And finally guys, the price and conclusion. With a storage case, Torbox Neo costs only $180, which is not really expensive for the quality and the functions you get for the money. So if you are not like me and you still don't remember a million of hotkeys combinations, of course because of editing in one program for literally like a decade plus, it's about time to get an editing controller and to learn how to use it and to become a much faster and more efficient editor. Unfortunately to me the Torbox Neo is a no-go because of two factors. I rarely edit at my desk because I'm always on the go, traveling, editing in trains and planes, at my backyard looking after my daughter, in the subway of course and so on. So I don't even use a mouse to be honest and having two setups and jumping back and forth would completely mess up my brain. And that is why the second reason as you might have guessed is that I'm so used to hotkeys for more than 10 years of editing that my mind is simply refusing to relearn everything from scratch. So if you work at home, at your desk like 99% of the time, like if you're having a desktop computer and you are ready to get through the learning curve or maybe you are just starting out editing, I highly recommend trying out the Torbox Neo. You'll be pleasantly surprised with its capabilities, but if your editing experience is always on the go, like mine, I would say you'd better stick to the good old keyboard shortcuts. Don't forget that I only tried it in Final Cut Pro 10, but I think it'll work great in Photoshop, Lightroom or some other cool programs. Who knows? So what do you think of it guys? Do you use some kind of a controller and why? Share all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as the same videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.